Once again, it's our own people. I am Brian Redman, the doctor of discussion. This is the relationship rehab. Is it the relationship? Yeah, this is the relationship rehab. And this is yet another episode of Your Secret Garden. <laughs> All right, what's going on, people? So, what we gonna do when we grow up is we gonna talk about this here relationship advice that I got because this one is a doozy. Do you see the eyes? It's a doozy. All right, yeah, this is gonna be a doozy. So, what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna read it and then we'll go into it from there. Okay, all right, cool. So, follow me, follow me. Here we go. All right. This is from Adam, right? I was in a relationship with a young lady for two years, all right? During the course of the relationship, we broke up and made up. The root cause of the breakup, so they basically was doing the break up to make up. That's all we do. First you love me, and then you hate me. That's a game for fools. Yep, that's what they did. They were breaking up to make up, making up to break up. They were doing the back and forth. Back, back, forth, and forth. Back, 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 and forth. There, yeah, that's that cameo. That ain't that Leah. That's the cameo. Y'all don't know nothing about that cameo. Word up. Ow. It's a cold. All right, let's get back to this. Okay. The root cause of the breakups was my reluctance to agree to her wishes to eventually marry her and giving her at least two children. She wanted the two babies. She wanted the two shouties. She wanted the marriage. And get, okay. All right. In addition to this, she was a Christian, which I am not. Okay. I would eventually have had to convert to Christianity, to the Christianity faith, to be her ideal husband. Aside from this, I am also a single father. So you already got a shawty, okay. After my relationship with my daughter's mother, four years prior, I became very aware of the issues that plague single fathers due to the ills of the family court system. Oh yeah. And uh, family court system and the women who use and support it. The same issue relates to realities of marriage as well. These institutions provide no incentive for the progression of men, just women. To make a long story short, the relationship ended due to her frustration of me constantly telling her that while I love her, I would like to be with her, there is no incentive for me to marry her. Ooh, wow. Because of the risks that are involved. If the relationship fails post-marriage slash children, it will never benefit her. Uh, well, I guess he's saying, I, I will never benefit. What is he saying? It will never benefit her via child support and alimony despite her claims. Well, I guess he's saying it will never benefit him, I guess, because of child support and alimony. Despite her claims that she would not resort to these actions should the relationship fail. My question to you is, should I take the plunge and commit to her wishes for the good of the relationship? Wow! Alright, so, first and foremost, um, I hear you. First and foremost, I do. I, I, I definitely see why this would be a concern and why this would be a potential problem for you. So I'm going to go ahead and let's walk through this real. I let's walk through the first part of this pretty quick. So you're in a relationship for two years. You did a lot of making up the breakup. First and foremost, I would like to have known what those makeup and breakups were or what the issues was. If it was just the back and forth about the marriage thing, that's one thing. But if it was other things or other factors that were involved, then how those things have worked out or how they are, how they have been resolved, that would have definitely played a, a role in what I'm going to say. But neither that's neither here nor there because you basically broke up already so that could have been definitely something that where hey because of what you guys were, were going back and forth about or breaking up about 
that uh, it may have not been a good situation for you both uh, anyway. The other piece of this is she wanting you to marry her and you're, you being reluctant um, about marrying her, that first and foremost is a huge problem that I do hear quite often. Women, 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 hear me. If a man wants to marry you, he will. If a man wants to marry you, he will tell you that. If a man wants to marry you, he will prove that. If a man wants to marry you, he will find that ring and he will slide it on your finger and tell you, woman, look here, you gonna be mine and we gonna be together and that's just it. That's what he's gonna do. If you having conversations, and I, I notice I'm saying conversations, several conversations about him marrying you, chances are he probably ain't. And if he do, he probably don't want to. So, you don't want to put yourself in that situation to where you asking a dude, when you gonna get married? When you gonna get married? When you gonna get married? When are you gonna marry me? If you got to ask that, then you ain't, that ain't the one for you. Let a man be a man and let a man come and get his woman. Let a man come and get his queen, get his, his Eve, whatever you want to call it. A man, what he wants, he will go and get. A man will go after what he wants. A man will spend his time, his money, and his resources on the things that he loves and the things that he wants. Trust and believe that if you don't believe nothing else. So if you got to pressure a dude, if you got to constantly have, and not, not to say that it's not okay, it's all right to have a conversation and say, hey, hey, a player, where this going? Are we committed? Are we trying to move forward? I'm trying to be married at, at some point in time, and I'm not waiting another 10 years to see what you're going to do. But I want to get married. I want this relationship to progress to that final to that final level of commitment to where it's just us. If that's what you want to do, then it's okay to have that conversation. But you shouldn't be having that conversation every six months. Saying, wait a ring, wait a ring, wait a ring, yeah. Put a ring on if you want to put a ring. You shouldn't have to have that conversation. Dudes, we know. If we want it, we will come and get it. If we want it, we will put a ring on it. If we just want to hit it, we will just hit it. That's just how it is. So, at the end of the day, women, if that's what you expecting from a dude, if you expect him to be married, if you expect for him to marry you, then that should not be, that should be a conversation that, first of all, should be held up front after you've made a commitment to each other. You say, hey, we're going to be together, it's just going to be us, and I like you, you like me, we in love, and all that. Then that's what you should put up front and say, hey, this is how it is, this is how it's going to be, this is what we're going to do. And you should be able to progress from there. Now, if every year, if two years after that, you got to have a conversation about it, that's totally acceptable. But you shouldn't be having one every month. You shouldn't be having one every three months. When y'all go over to your mama house, everybody shouldn't be saying, we're going to marry you, girl. Shouldn't be having to do that. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, if y'all going to be together, and he going to marry you, he will show you. And you guys can talk about that and plan that out and say, hey, you know, the next couple of years, the next three years, Let's do this next four years. Let's make sure this happens because after year five, I ain't waiting, player. That's what you should be able to say, and it should make sense. You know, because we all have things that go on in our life. You get school, you get jobs, and those type of things do sometimes take precedent of what it is that you're trying to do as far as getting married. But there should be a plan in place. And I'm not just talking about, yeah, what day, girl, we ain't talking about that. I'm talking about a clear and concise plan to say this is how it's going to operate. This is what we're going to do, and we'll get married in between this time. That's how it should be. And if it's not like that, like I said, have maybe one or two conversations about it. If he ain't responding, you need to move on. You know what I'm saying? Or just stay in it the way that it is. Accept it at the end of the day. Uh, the other part to that is you switching over to Christianity. Uh, at the end of the day, um, whatever it is that you believe and, and the way that you believe and what you believe in, you shouldn't have to convert or change that or, or say anything or do anything or compromise who you are and what your beliefs are to just be with somebody. I strongly rec don't recommend that. I sh I'm strongly against that. If you a Muslim and she's a Jehovah Witness, whatever the case may be, then if you guys are both highly, uh, uh, heavily religious, then you don't need to be together because that's not going to work. And then when you have children involved, now you have to go through the thing of how you're going to raise your children because what you believe and the God you believe in is different from what she believes and the God she believes in. And that confuses the children and it puts the children in a very awkward position. You know what I'm saying? If you are an atheist and this person is a devout uh, uh, Christian or something like that, 
then that's not going to work because you guys have a, a different belief system, which determines a lot of factors. How you treat each other, how you raise your kids, the, and the choices that you make for your children and their lives will all be affected by that. And in the, a lot of situations, the greater majority of the time, it will be in a negative light. So that was strike two. Um, at the end of the day, the, the next thing that you went to was the relationship that you had with your daughter's uh, mother. That obviously ended uh, bad, and, and and with that being said, what were the lessons that you learned from that? Um, I guess that's what led you into the whole uh, family court system and, and, and dealing with that. So, and this is kind of like the nitty gritty of what I really wanted to like dive into. So, men, 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 all right, but getting to this. So if you are a man and you have a, a reluctancy or fear or you just don't like the way that the court system is, totally understand that because the court system, hear me, the court system is not set up to benefit you. It is set up to benefit the woman. If there is a split, if there is a separation, whatever the case may be, the court is going to find generally in favor for the mother. Period, point blank. If it's just a marriage thing, they will find favorably for the wife. So there are plenty of instances that support this. And that's not even something that we need to even dispute. Somebody can sit there and say, yeah, but not all the time. We ain't talking about that. We talking about it in general. In general, that's what happens. So at the end of the day, the only thing that you can do to protect yourself against that to where if you get married and you have children and you don't want to be uh, subjected to the court system in that manner is you need to hear me you need to have a marital contract and basically what that contract is you get you got to get you some lawyers involved baby but what that does is that sets up all of those parameters uh as far as what happens and what you both agree to on this day that you guys sign it if you are to split up whether it's a divorce whether it's what happens with the kids custody all of that stuff is basically worked out. So it's basically saying that what you would do as far as going through a divorce, going through friend of the court, family court, and all that kind of stuff, all that stuff that you would do once you guys decide to break up, this is all done beforehand. So it, it, it you can have it where it covers finances, where it covers alimony, where it covers child support, where it covers custody, all of that stuff, your assets, everything. So you can say, hey, look, Yep, I love you. You love me. Yes, I'm in love. And you in love. Yeah, baby, I love you so much. You ever done me, girl? Is you is or is you ain't my baby? Because, baby, I'm in love with you. That's what you do. You at that point, do a marital contract. Because what that marital contract is going to say is to say, hey, you and yours and what you have and what you and yours and what you have, you guys can set it up to where you split it. You can say, hey, you get this amount and that's it. You get this for child support and that's it or i get the kids and you don't you get the kids and i don't you can work all of those things out and then if that ever comes up to where somebody wants out and throw in a flag and say i'm done i can't do this no more well you say every night i had to fight to prove my love and i'm tired of it then you can definitely say all right cool this is what's gonna happen you go to your lawyer say hey we're not gonna work out Let's get the marital contract thing executed. This is what happens. This is how it goes. And then you're done. Because you both agreed on this before you got married. You signed it and said, this is what I want to do. Now, I don't get no 17-year-old to sign no contract. Now, make sure this person is a grown, legal adult, and that they have legal counsel. Because they need to be able to understand it. And you don't want nobody trying to see you saying, well, I ain't understand it. I was 22 and I was just in love. And I didn't know what he was saying. That I'm only going to get 100000 out of this $100 million that he got. Whatever the case may be, you just put yourself in a position where you both can leave. Because there are a lot of times, too, where, hey, you could both guys can be uh, uh, in a relationship to where you're coming from a divorce. And now you both had kids on the other side. And now y'all about to bring all that together. And if something happens eight years later or 10 years later and you both leave, well, you both had assets and, and, and things like that before you even got married and you brought those together. And now you got one fighting over this, one fighting over that. You got to do payouts. You got to draw down off your 401k and you got to forfeit part of your pension and all. You can have all that kind of stuff worked out. 
and it's something that you both agreed upon. So there is no legal discourse after that where they can say, oh, I changed my mind. I'm going to the doctor, to the lawyers, and I'm going to talk to the courts, and we're going to... You ain't got to do that. You can just say, hey, this is what it is. This is what we agreed upon. This is what happens. This is what you get. This is what I get. This is how the kids are going to be uh, taken care of. This is how the custody is going to go. And it's done. So it's like that is something that a lot of people don't don't really think about. And they don't really necessarily do. But it's something that you definitely should should be on the table and should be discussed. And if you are a person that has a, a substantial amount of wealth and assets and you are going to marry somebody who doesn't have what you have and is not on the same level financially as you are, that's fine. But you need to have a marital contract, not a prenup. You need to have a marital contract in place because that is going to determine what you both have agreed upon and you don't have to figure nothing else out. It's already set. It's designed to say this is what we going to do if we don't work. And that's exactly what you need to do. So I hope that helps. I would definitely say do not take the plunge. Don't uh, uh, dive in and get married to this person just because you care about it. You love her. You have too much that you are too concerned about to where you need to do this. I would not recommend you to make that type of commitment on that type of level. Don't do it. You need to say, hey, this ain't working. Even though I love you, even though it's in that sex is good and I can get it in and you can touch me the way nobody else can touch me, girl. And you make me feel like, but I don't want to get married. And that's essentially what you're saying, bro, uh, Adam. you saying that you don't want to get married and you shouldn't have to compromise who you are and what you want to do just to be with somebody else at the end of the day. So, yeah, relationships is all about compromise and sacrifice, but you have to want to work at, at doing that. It's like being at a job. The things that you will sacrifice for working at and sacrifice your time, energy, and resources for working at McDonald's is way different than what you would if you were working at Google or Apple or Amazon or someplace like that. So the benefits and things like that are more in place. And, and depending on what you're doing, being a shift leader or being an area manager, that can really determine a, a lot of what you're willing to sacrifice for. So that's what I mean. Don't necessarily put yourself, don't put yourself in a situation to where you are sacrificing your time, energy, and your resources, and who you are as a person. You're sacrificing your morals, your religious beliefs, and all of that just to be with somebody that makes you feel good and that you have a good time with. It's not worth it because at the end of the day, you with that first argument that you have, that first disagreement that you have, you're gonna go all the way back to saying, why did I marry this person? That's what you're gonna think about. And then you ain't gonna want to get out because you didn't get a, a pre you didn't get a marital contract. You got a, a, a just went ahead and went to the courthouse, and now you know if I leave, she gonna do this, she gonna make me suffer, and that's gonna be a problem. So don't do that to your kid that you have now. Don't do it to the kids that you will maybe have later. Don't do it to yourself, and don't do it to her because just because that's what she wants, it may not be what she truly, really, 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 really deep down inside wants. Maybe she just wants the idea of being married. Maybe she's in love with the idea of having her ideal man, and you don't fit that mold, bro. So I hope that this video has helped you, and I hope that it's helped somebody else become a better version of themselves. I love you guys as always. I appreciate the time, the effort. Hey, and by the way, make sure that you go like, subscribe, and share to the Relationship Rehab uh, YouTube channel. If you got any other questions, if you need some relationship advice, go to therelationshiprehab.com and fill out the My Secret Garden portion of it. It sends it to me. It's all anonymous. I ain't gonna put your business out on the street. All of the women are, are E's, all of the men are Adams, so you ain't got to worry about your name being out there. And man, let me know what's on your mind and what you need some help with, and I got you. May take me a little while, but I got you. All right, at the end of the day, I love you guys. I thank you guys. Peace. And as always, I'm out, and this is your secret garden. Yeah, that boy got a little sign, a little pipe. They got the pipe there. I hear a note or two. I hear a note or two. Yes, I can. All right, guys. Peace. I'm out. <laughs>